you really do. You're a 21 year old punk fucking kid. This grandpa's given you everything all your fucking life. You've never had a car payment, a house payment. Everything you live in was given to you by grandpa. You fucking don't know what it's like to work for a fucking living like I do. To bust my fucking ass and do what I do. And you know what, Sean? You fucked me, and that's the way you got it. But you know what? Your grandpa's money will run out someday, and you'll have to feast for yourself. Get a fucking job, you piece of shit. Welcome to Behind the Smoke Podcast, <laughs> Barbecue War Stories. My name is Sean Walchef from Cali Comfort Barbecue. My birthday boy co-host is out getting uh, one of his best friends he played football with at K-State, uh, Jeremy Clary, and here they are coming into the room right in the middle of the podcast. This is how I like Jeremy to roll. What's oh, happening, Jeremy? Up. What's going on, brother? What's up, I guess Thank, thanks for having us in Texas. I'm Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy Stewart. Nice to meet you. So we're doing the podcast a little bit differently today, but um, for, us, for us, it's really, really exciting. We're here at IMBBQ 2018 uh, for the National Barbecue and Grilling Association. We have Stuart Meyer, the CEO, and we have Mark Lambert, uh, the president, both the heavyweights telling us about what's going down in this conference. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for uh, thank you for your time. It's great to be here. It was good to see Mark's reaction. That's the first time I think you heard your intro. In your intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what's happening what there? What the hell is going <laughs> Yeah, for, well, the, same hell. for for those of you tuning Damn, in for, tuning in for the first <laughs> time, uh, that was a former business partner of mine. We started Derek and I started this podcast to uh, talk about entrepreneurship, uh, what really happens in business, uh, digital marketing, how to scale your business, things that we've been so fortunate to do. Barbecues opened up so many different doors for us with sports entertainment, and um, you know Derek's butcher shop, our barbecue restaurant, you know. 2012, we had National Barbecue Association come out to Ca uh, California, come out to San Diego. And, you know, Gene Goykache, our mentor, he was so instrumental in getting us to be a part of this barbecue bus tour. And this barbecue bus tour happened today here as well. Yes, it did. Um, it's part of an annual ritual. But to have barbecue legends like Mike Mills come into Cali Comfort and Spring Valley, um, the Blacks, uh, you name it, and they came in to look and see what we were doing. What were we doing with Tri-Tip? You know, what, what kind of things could they pick up? And not only that, but they shared with us. And for us, it was such a humbling experience. And to be back here, I mean, it's really come full circle. And uh, Derek and I are just really privileged to have you guys yeah. uh, Well, here. you know, that, that's the cool thing, Sean, about that barbecue tour, because it's not just about going to restaurants and eating. It's about examining their operations, see how other people do it, and, and kind of sharing those notes. You know, you've got new restaurant tours and barbecue that are getting started, and they're traveling all over the country from city to city and barbecue joint to barbecue joint talking. So that's kind of a little microcosm of, of being able to do that, to, to you know, put, to put them on the stage. Uh, you know, our members for years and years and years have loved the opportunity to see how other folks do it in different parts of the country. So it really is a great experience. Uh, typically always sells out. I think our bus was sold out today. So uh, just a great experience. Where, where did they go today? They went to 407 Barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, they went to a place called Magdalena's. Uh, and uh, the third place is escaping me at the moment. We were in the board meeting today, so we yeah. don't get to do all that fun stuff. You just uh, get to plan for it. We get to plan for it. Um, but, uh, no, it's a really great experience. You know, 407 Barbecue, Brian McLarty, a really cool dude. Uh, two years ago, Mark, if you'll remember, when we came out and uh, went out to Trace Arnold's, I guess you could call it a ranch. Uh, he has a great big building where he had really big boy toys sitting in it. And in the side of this, this it's bar he called it the barn. Uh, he got the ultimate tailgate trailer. Uh, we went in. There's like a full commercial kitchen in there. And at that point, Brian was doing catering out of that kitchen. He had a whole roll of s smokers on trailers out back going full bore. That's awesome. And, you know, he's one of the smart guys that came into this business. He started with the catering. He started doing a barbecue trailer in uh, South Lake, Texas, where he just kind of tried uh, to move the trailer around to figure out where the most demand was for him. And then he finally broke ground and built his own bricks and mortar. Wow. Uh, so, you know, he's, going. I think, going about it the right way. I mean, you don't want to rush into building a big restaurant, taking on a lot of debt. And, and, and you know, you want to work your way into it. You want to be smart about your location. And I was so excited that we went to his place. Um, so that people can realize, you know, I talk to people every day that, hey, I'm thinking in a year's time I'm going to open a barbecue restaurant or I'm a caterer and I'm looking to move into a restaurant. And, it, you know, by the blessing of learning everything that they teach us, 
you know, we're able to connect these types of people and, and to talk to them and get them thinking the right way about going into this. You know, succeeding faster, making fewer mistakes along the way is what the National Barbecue and Grilling Association is all about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, one of my first, well, the first time I ever went to an MBBQA meeting was actually my hometown in Olive Branch, Mississippi. And I walk in, and one of the first people I meet is Paul Kirk. And one of the second people I'm, well, then was Kel Phelps. I know who he was. But then uh, Dave Raymond, Sweet Baby Ray, yeah. he, you know, he kind of sets me down and puts me in the corner and wants to hear my story. <laughs> That's so and My cool. story is pretty short at that point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so How many seconds you got? Yeah. <laughs> but by the time he heard my story, he pretty much kind of started leading me down another road that I was I starting going down one road. And he found a, you know, a turn road pretty quick and, and made me think about turning around and moving back. And so I thought about going into the barbecue restaurant business. And, you know, it's not for the faint at heart. It's not for everyone. <laughs> and it's one of those things like McClarty. You know, he, 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 he went into it full force. And what I found out about this association is really cool that no matter what road you're going down, there's somebody here to either scare you off of it <laughs> or make you more determined. Sure. And, sure. The, and, you know, one way or the other, whichever way you decide to go, you, you know, most of the time you'll get the right information here to be successful. And I was scared. <laughs> I, I crawfished right back up, to, <laughs> turned around. <laughs> and I went down the road selling my own products and doing a minimal amount of catering to get by until my business got off its feet. And we started doing cooking classes and selling different types of barbecue products. Uh, you know, Brian, he took it head on. Mm-hmm. And conquered the, the barbecue beast and went from food truck and then started operating as a caterer full time and then, you know, started off and bought him a, a little shack and then just grew upon it. So, I mean, no matter, that's the cool thing about this business, regardless of what road you want to go down and barbecue to make it your livelihood, there are people here that can help you along the way. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. It's really important for people to understand this community is something different and people want to help each other and it's a very, very transparent community everyone's what they what they can do for somebody else what they can help so you don't make the same mistakes it's one of the biggest reasons sean and i made this podcast is because look we've we failed a lot mm-hmm. and um if i can help anybody and let them know my story about what yeah. i did that was wrong and save you that time and money that it's going to cost you know sometimes the best thing isn't to open a brick and mortar store right away yep. and there, there's so much overhead in that that it might not you know, you might not even have your, your recipes down pat just yet. Go go sample them. Go to some different uh, venues. Try a competition. Do different things. Then you can slowly get into it and say, hey, is this something I really want to do? Because if you have a food truck or if you have something like that, you're putting in those 18-hour days, guess what? They don't get any less when you have a brick-and-mortar <laughs> store. So no. if you don't like it then, you're not going to like it when you have your brick-and-mortar store and you have a, a big nut to crack and you ha- you ha- yeah. you can't get out of it. You know, yeah. you have a lease that's three years and now you don't know what to do. You really need to be in the right place in life to do that. Yeah, Sure. Yeah, Absolutely. you know, one of the things, uh, I hadn't even thought about it until you started telling that story about Dave. When I would, when the uh, National Barbecue was in San Diego, I went to one of the classes put on by Robin, who has Robin's Barbecue. Mm-hmm. Um, and he talked about converting his breakfast restaurant into a barbecue restaurant which is exactly what i was trying to do and he talked about all the challenges that he had all the people that said hey you'll never make it you know this isn't a place for dinner people come in for breakfast don't you know don't kill the golden goose and he said you know what i did it was the best thing ever happened for me and all i needed was to hear that to reinforce my decision to say hey we're all in on barbecue like you know we're, we're a sports bar but if we're going to do something we're going to do it right and we're going to do it low and slow gene's way and this is how we're going to go yeah, if you know what you're getting into and you don't back up from it, I mean, it's on you. You just got to push through it. Yeah. But if you know it, but all of a sudden you really don't know what you're getting into and somebody, you know, throws that load on you, then you've got two options, push through it or back up. Yeah, sure. But as long as you, you go into it having the right support group that can tell you what's up. And you're ready to keep your eye on the ball. I mean, that's the big thing. You know, in the bus riding over here tonight, I was talking to um, – uh, Steven, our PepsiCo guy that, that's coming out, and he's been a um, sort of a cor- corporate chef consultant, worked for a very large, successful restaurant group. And, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things about barbecue is it's, it's, it is such a um, perishable product. And, you know, the notion of you can't take your eye off the ball, you can't leave the restaurant because 
you know, we're going to be talking about our 2018 NBBQA National Barbecue and Grilling Consumer Survey. And just a little, you know, a little bit of a sneak peek of it is, you know, when it gets down to restaurants and you think of all the things that barbecue restaurants or any restaurant for that matter can do to be successful nowadays, the top responses of what's most important to consumers, Crazy. food quality, food consistency, and customer service. Yep. Those are the three things. And, uh, you know, the reality of it. You know, if you're not watching that those meats like a hawk, if you're not making sure that they're being yeah. they're being held correctly, if you're not making sure that every plate that goes out isn't absolutely perfect, it's not like a steak or a burger. You can't refire another one and make it right. Right. It's like you're tanked. Sure. <laughs> if yeah. you take your eye off the ball. So And if you take your eye off the ball with hospitality. Yes. With with, with just labor costs. Yeah. I mean, that's gonna kill you. You know, with People, I mean, for us in California, I mean, we got minimum wage going up to fifteen bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're if we're not careful. And yeah. we don't, you know, do our due diligence and make sure that we're, you know, we still have to give hospitality, right? We still have to make sure that, you know, people that want to come and have barbecue, it's a, it's a, a labor of love. You want to make sure that everyone knows that you get your best people in there to do the best job and, and get your 15 bucks worth. If you don't, you got to get someone new in there and people don't understand. You can't just have people just standing around there taking dollars you know, every minute it, it doesn't work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's, it's, you know, I was, went to LC's down in uh, Kansas city a couple of years ago and it was a Sunday and they only open on Sundays when there's a Royals home game. And uh, <laughs> Mr. LC it. had retired years okay. ago, but we walked in there on a Sunday evening and there was Mr. LC sitting over in the corner, still keeping an eye on the store and, yep. and what's going on. Sure. And obviously I think his sons were running at that point. Uh, but, you know, the cool thing about it is most people go through their lives and do a daily job and, uh, you know, do unassuming things and, you know, don't get a lot of recognition except for being paid and having a livelihood. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that go into the restaurant business. And, you know, I think you can look at it two, two ways. You can feel like you're a slave to the business. And if you feel like you're a slave to the business, maybe it's not the right business for you. But, you know, the captains of the ship at barbecue restaurants or any restaurant – you're a rock star, man. If you're mm -hmm. if you're killing it, people idolize you. You know, when you walk in, and you're you're holding court, you're making sure everything's right, you're talking to guests. You know, I could I could point out a number of people that are out in that room right now, you know, with 20 plus years of barbecue restaurant success and you go into their place, you're going to see them at least 3 times while Absolutely. you're there. Yeah. It's important. It's important to be present. You know, my dad always said, you know, an absentee owner is a broke owner. Mm -hmm. Because if for us in the in, in a perishable business, you have to be there all the time. Yeah. You have to watch your product. I have to make sure, you know, I own a grocery store and we do barbecue as well, but I have to make sure that that product's coming in that back door and it's going out that front door paid for. Yeah. You know, and if you don't, if you think you're just going to be an absentee owner, and you're just going to invest in something, it's probably not going to work out in no. a perishable business. No. And, and, and the right way to look at it is it's not a prison cell. It's a stage. Sure. You get to get up on that stage every day and, and make people happy. I mean, no, what absolutely. more could you ask for in life if you're yeah. doing it right? Yeah. You make people happy every single day. We get people that come in all the time. My my motto at the store is I'd rather make three nickels instead of one dime. Yeah. So I'd rather keep people come in all the time, give them great product at a cheaper rate. I don't want to see them just on the holidays. I want to see them every single day and keep them happy. And to see them, that they know they're getting USDA prime beef from a Black Angus cattle every single day at a, at a rate that they can get at the commodity stores. I mean, they're so excited about it. And they can go, you know, cook for their friends. They can smoke for their friends. They can do stuff. We give them the recipes. We tell them what we're doing. They That's invaluable to them. They, yeah. they get so invested in you then. I mean, it's just your consumer becomes so vested. You can't you can't shake them. I mean, it, it's, it's no, exciting. Absolutely. You get to see them. They come back and they're like, Derek. I just made this ribeye for this guy, and it was the best ribeye we've ever made. You can't put a dollar on that. Not at all. Not at all. What more could you ask for? I mean, yeah. it's, it's the strength of our connections. It's our sense of identity and sense of belonging. That's what happiness is all about. And, sure. you know, if you look at it the right way, you approach it the right way in the restaurant business, you know, you've got it. I mean, that's why we do it. We love to see those looks on people's faces when we spend all that time making low and slow barbecue or grilling up something great. Or when you guys put on events like this yeah, and you guys can kind of sit back and say, man, this is pretty fucking You're cool. You're right. It's kind yeah, of like cooking really a badass cool. brisket and watching people's expressions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. And seeing people, hey, this is really nice. Yeah. And I mean, we got this, our this stars here, you know, Myron, Mac Myron Mixon's out there holding court, yep. Brad Orson, you know, we got Diva on the, the stage out there. Diva's out there. <laughs> Mark Lambert, you know, 
You got our good friend Chad Ward from Traeger that's out yeah, there yeah. You know, holding court. But, you know, it, it really is. It's funny. People come and it's like you see their jaws drop that, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this person's here. That person's here. It's like they've been part of the family forever. Yeah. You know, they're not here because they're being paid to be here. They're here because they want to be here. And they're part of this family and they're committed to this, even at the levels of success that they get to. That's the great thing about it. You know, don't be fooled. They're still humble, supportive people. They're there. We talked about it with uh, Mike Mills and it's just. They're everyday people just like the, everybody else. The, the Godfather. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. out there. Yeah. So. yeah. And but, not just Mike, but he has instilled the sense of belonging and the sense of of um, of being part of the family and the sense of giving back in his entire crew. Sure. Yeah. So it's not just oh, Amy's Mike. Amy's great. Yeah, but, yeah. And not just Amy. But yeah. Sammy and Lori and Becky yeah. and Philip and now, you know, um, um, Luke. His, yeah. he's, he's with Old Hickory. Oh, Luke the, is amazing. The entire Luke crew. is amazing. If you yeah. come out of Seventeenth Street, yeah. you you have you have given back to MBBQA and you've helped somebody along the way. So they've instilled the how much it means to give back and help people. The entire group. And when you go there, you feel like family. Lives and breathes. And, and Mike is still serving on the board of directors. I mean, he is like our our, our wise philosopher. And, you know, the great thing about Mike, he's such a beautiful human being. He, he doesn't say much until he has something to say. And when he hit, then he, when he chooses to speak, everyone, it's the quietest moment ever because Her you show. know, when he's going to speak, he's got something that we're going to learn from that he's going to say yep. something that's going to enlighten everything that we're working through. Yeah. It's yeah. Just amazing. He and Pat Burke are the guys that, you know, that mentored us in competition barbecue and we knew nothing. Yeah. You know, we sit up next to those guys and they tucked us under their wing and helped us along and. And helped us read scorecards and taught us how to do presentations and really helped us along. Didn't know us from Adam. Sure. But, you know, they were they were just the, they were the helpful guys. They were the, the kindred spirit in barbecue that was there to help. Yeah, well, Mark, I mean, what, what kind of got you into this? I mean, what what steered you in this direction? Um, <laughs> well, you know, I worked in the restaurant business in college uh, for a, a Dallas company called Brinker International. And they do like on the border and chilies and all that kind of good stuff. So I worked at a at a, a fast casual place called Grady's, and you know that throughout when I worked at Grady's, that was kind of my I worked my way through college, and I did every job in the restaurant business you can think about, and that's one of the things that gave me confidence, thinking I wanted to go into that business. Um, my first job out of that, I got met my wife waiting tables and and managing restaurants, and um, my first job out of that was selling cell phones when sell the cell phone industry was big time, you know? Sure. And so <laughs> still is lo and behold, the, it's kind of a thing. Yeah. It's when, kind of a thing. That's when people had 450, $500 cell phone bills uh-huh. back in the day for one phone. Yeah. Sure. I remember that. Yep. So you, know, we had a hospitality booth at Memphis in May and you know, that was my first job Uh-oh. was selling cell phones. Uh-oh. And they said, hey, who wants to come to Memphis in May? <laughs> I said, I, I want to go. I get to drink beer. Yeah, 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 I want to go. Sure. I didn't I'm know anything about that. barbecue, right. but I wanted to go. I knew how to I was doing something about cooking just because of the business, and it, I was passionate about it before, but we spent some time at Memphis in May, and we just did what everyone told us. You know, we would pick up that, clean that, put that up, screw and screw that, haul this, load that, unload that. And after a couple of years, the, the, you know, they maybe had a bad year in the, in the budget, you know, and all of a sudden they weren't doing Memphis in May again. All of us look around like, what, what, what? What Why the not? hell? Yeah. Hell no. Hell no. That's really? my favorite thing. We, we, you know, mm-hmm. I got to have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, about absolutely. half a dozen of us that would come put our, our heads together and, and we're, we go to a bar and we have a few beers and we're trying to decide all right, how we're going to pay for this and what's our team name going to be. And, you know, we, after about a six pack, I go to the bathroom <laughs> and Sweet Child of Mine's playing on the radio. There you go. And I'm singing to myself. That's it. That's, that's it. their new that's name. That's my calling. That's the name. So I go back out and spit it out, and they go, well, that sucks less than anything else we've come up with. <laughs> so we come up with that, and we go back to Memphis in May the next year, and we compete. And, you know, we didn't do very well. The year after that, we did a little better. The year after that, a little bit better. And, you know, the the guy that was the head cook, his dad brought him up in barbecue, and I was never a barbecue guy. But his dad brought him up in the Boot Hill, Missouri, and he had some heritage and learned about it when he was a kid. I learned from him. He passed on in 2000, and it was like the week before Memphis and May, so I was thrust into it. And I just kind of had to pick up what he taught me and and pick up with it, and I did. And, and that year we got, uh, I think we were in ninth place at Memphis and May. Right. 
And all of us, you know, said, we can do this. We can do this without him. He, he helped us along, but we can keep, we can carry the torch. So we continued on and, and struggled with the 11th and the 13th and the 16th and the 37th. And lo and behold, we had a first place. Oh, wow. And in Memphis and Maine, that's point, huge. I've, I've seen huge. the I've seen that's the trophy huge. at his house. <laughs> it's huge. That was only that was the first trophy we'd won, really. That's incredible. First place. And I'm sure, wow, we got something. You got the bug. You got and the barbecue next year, bug. Next year we're like sixth place, but the year after that we hit first again. And next year we hit second again. Then we hit first again and first again and third. And it was just we started doing this the circuit, and people started liking our seasonings and our sauce. And people started asking for it. And, you know, we started using it in our marketing. Uh, I worked in a construction company after that. Mm-hmm. So it just, it was a, it was a snowball. It just really, it, it really, when you talk about the way things grow organically, it grew organically and it really didn't have a destination in mind, just trying to do the right things and, uh, and love what we do. And it, and it grew into livelihood you know yeah i think that's one of the best things about barbecue is you know the more that you get involved the more you realize that people are so willing to share their passion with you in an in a way that they want you to grow you know when you have mike mills out there and you know you mentioned luke ray we my wife and gene we went out to kansas city uh two years ago and we did a whole barbecue mecca tour and went to see met with carolyn wells got to see the new kcbs headquarters um, but we drove out to Cape Girardeau because we cook on Old Hickory Pits. Mm-hmm. We didn't have any appointment, had nothing, but we called and Luke picked up. He's like, yeah, you know, sure, I'll show you around. Like, not only did he show us around the old where they started, yep. but then he took us to the new facility. I mean, he gave us this whole, I mean, we took a whole day away from him, but it was that important for him to show us how they do their pits. And, you know, he's like, I'm not supposed to show you this, but, you know, this is what, you know, this is what it is. And this is how we make it. This is why we make it. And once you meet those people and you know, they're the ones that are answering the phone call mm-hmm. when our restaurant, you know, we've had, I mean, we've been doing barbecue for 10 years at our restaurant. Our pits never go down, but when they do, guess what? They'll pick up the phone and they'll help you because yep. they know how important it is for us to have those pits working. Yep. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, it's 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 the interdependency, you know, it's the nature of the way things are. And I can't tell you how many stories I've heard, you know, from restaurant to, you know, people who are on the road doing rib cook offs, you know, throughout the summers. Uh, you know, people who compete against each other, their equipment will break down and their competitor, their competition will be the first ones to spring into action and help them fix what's going on so that they can keep going and they can keep moving forward. Yeah, we had a team in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, set up next to us their first time they ever competed in an NBN contest, and they had a brand-new, shiny, beautiful pit maker pit, <laughs> trailer with all the accoutrements, and they knew nothing about what they were doing. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, they could cook a great pork shoulder. Sure. They didn't know how to make it look good. They didn't know how to present it. They didn't know anything. And, you know, really, bare minimum, you need about five whole pork shoulders to do that event. I think they had four. Well, the, you know, I was talking to him, and after it was over, over and tasted it, I said, guys, this is really good. This is really good. And I said, you know, uh, I hope you got something stacked up for finals because that's really, you know, oh, we'll never make finals. We're not worried about it. And and then, lo and behold, they come and brought our finals ticket. And when I looked at it, we were, they got handed it to us first, and I looked, and that team was on it. Oh, wow. And I walked over, and I said, guys, <laughs> get ready. They get go, ready. What do you mean? I said, <laughs> Your You're name going to finals. That. They go, no way. Yep. And he like immediately runs over to me and grabs me by the hand and goes, we don't have another shoulder. <laughs> I said, what? He said, man, we can only cook four. I said, uh, hold on a minute. I walked over there with the camera, pulled a pan out, yep. took a whole shoulder. I didn't know go. which one it was. I said, now you do. Now you do. You got to beat me now. <laughs> exactly because right. that's the fun of it right absolutely it didn't matter whether i got first no. or second but i handed him one of my shoulders and another one well, we still beat him for right? sure but he could have beat me and i'd have still you know cheered for him that, that's the fun of it yeah that stuff happens all the time at contests and you know it's great to see other barbecue restaurants out supporting each other the way that they do you know we've seen something really cool happen on the west coast with you know just kind of the community the way that other barbecue restaurants we're all supporting each other you know and that's something that's very important for Derek and I is it's not about Cali Comfort it's not about Valley Farm it's about how do we grow the industry and how do we spread what we love to do because we've seen it change people's lives I mean we've made relationships Derek and I wouldn't be friends today if it wasn't for barbecue yeah you know if I didn't come and ask him to be a title sponsor for our charity um, charity event for the kids yeah he came to ask me for money 
<laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, he uh, came and asked me to to sponsor, and it's really what brought us together was barbecue and our love for giving back because mm -hmm. there's a charity aspect to it for underprivileged kids and youth sports, and that's what we were excited about. It's like, man, we were 20. Six, Four? 25. 25? Yeah. You're older. You're old as fuck. Well, you're you're, older you're, than you're, you're a birthday boy today. I am. Yeah. yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Um, happy birthday. birthday thank you. Thank here. you. But it's, uh, it's a young buck. Yeah. But I mean, we were 25 years old and just having this charity component to it. You know, we're like, man, this is this is something that we can get our community to be proud about. And, and it brings everybody together. And we live in this world right now where it's so segregated, right? Everyone's, you know, the race thing, it's black and white and this and that. And it's, it's liberal and conservative. And it's like, when we do these events, you don't hear any of that. Mm -hmm. It's all races. It's all religions. It's all, it doesn't matter. All genders. Everyone comes together for one common goal is to have some good barbecue and enjoy it. And it's just such a positive thing. And there's just such a, a authentic feel towards this barbecue industry that's what draws it me is. towards this and, all the time and it's universal you know tomorrow i know folks are gonna be listening to this on friday but uh you know sitting right out there right now is two people rose tucker and matt Amazing. soleil who are Amazing. the filmmakers behind the barbecue documentary that's on netflix right now right. And, yeah. and from talking to them they feel it is doing very well Netflix is very obscure about what kind of information that they give out, but they seem to be very pleased with its performance. But that's the whole notion of it. You know, they're cultural documentarians. Uh, they grew up in Australia, and you know, every country has their own unique barbecue styles and traditions. But the message through that film is like barbecue kind of unites the world together. It is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter how much or how little money you have. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, people who by all means, probably would not come together, connect together, find ways to do it over this great, you know, uh, tradition. And, and the traditions are different in every country, but at the root of it, the ritual is the same. You know, it's, it's an invitation to connect. Yep. It, you know, it, it is, it is a, a, a moment of, of harmony. Uh, you know, it's a moment of, uh, you know, people togetherness and community. And, you know, it's it's the sacrifice of those that are cooking and going to the trouble and, and cooking something that is otherworldly once people other people taste it. And, you know, it's it's no wonder that in our own American history, as our American style of barbecue evolved, you know, it took stage center for politics, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, how can people, you know, be so disagreeable when their bellies are full of, of delicious <laughs> barbecue? Yeah. And, you know, to this day, it's still used as such, mm -hmm. you know, in the South and, and all over the place to have uh you know you know look at this whole hogs <laughs> oh wow that's got my name on it yep that's and right. I'm, i was a i'm a deputized or well, one time it was for real but it's <laughs> it is real but i'm a deputized uh, mississippi deputy sheriff and not because i ever went to school or had any training it's because the sheriff when he went for re-election he had people run his campaign and the people that cook barbecue helped him win elections. Wow. And so he deputized the people that ran the pits and kept people happy and the dignitaries right. happy and, and put good barbecue on their plates. He deputized us year after year after year after year because we helped him win his elections. And it wasn't through anything, any magic. It's just that we put good barbecue out and people enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and absolutely, you know, we're so happy. They're going to, Matt and Rose are going to be our keynote speakers. We're actually going right. to run the film uh, starting at 7 15 tomorrow morning. Film we're going to run for, the whole thing. Yeah, people, people are going to be having breakfast, that. check into it. And if you haven't seen it, it is out on Netflix. Uh, but then they're going to get up, give a presentation, the story behind how they made the film, and there's going to be a Q&A. But, you know, last year we had White McSpadden who came up. And, you know, it would be easy to get some restaurant guru or someone to come out that's talking about here's the latest techniques and strategies or this and that. But we've made, the, you know, the committee and MBBQA has made a conscious attempt to use this keynote slot to, first of all, deepen people's appreciation for this timeless tradition of, of meat and fire and right. our, our own connection to that meat and fire. And I think the more people feel a part of this legacy, they feel a part of this traditions, this part of way of life and this, this, this way of community, then, you know, it makes them feel greater ownership for, you know, the torch that we're carrying right now. And we will carry on and pass on to the next generation, the generation beyond that, you know, Black's barbecue is here. 
and you know they're into their third generation with Barrett and Barrett just had a little baby last fall and you know Luke Wiley is yep. the next generation that's coming up it's been a, a great tradition in their family but you know to me there's there's nothing more beautiful in this crazy hectic world that's more crazy and hectic than it's ever been where we can slow down come together and, and celebrate togetherness celebrate something that we can all agree on sure. no matter what your walk of life is and uh you know use it as a moment to slow down time and just appreciate life yeah a couple of years ago i met a group from mexico that they came to memphis and may to cook memphis and may for the they never wow their first time so cool so they show up and they're you know we connected through you know one of the operations directors at memphis and may Really, I just he just wanted someone to answer all their questions. Sure. And before it was all over, we made great friends. Yep. We sat around. We had tequila. We had carne asada. <laughs> there you go. And we now made, we're talking. We made good friends. And this was on Wednesday, Memphis in May. By the end of the week or the weekend, for that matter, you know, we were like peas and carrots. Yeah. Right? We were all good buddies, and they have a, a they have a saying that you know what you said really rings true in any culture in any country when it comes to what we do, they're saying is el fuego nos une, and the fire makes us one, or the fire unites us, and that's, that's what awesome. that's their mantra, and and I see that more and more. But where I go to Germany, Australia, Mexico, to San Diego, wherever I go, people really unite around the fire, and it, sure. and they have a common goal and interest and and a passion about it. Yeah, because I think a lot of people that do this get it. It's like you didn't invent fire. No, you didn't invent all <laughs> no. that. Like so embrace it and just know that everyone's doing it we're all doing it together and it's going to unite us yep yeah. don't don't try to fight it and be like well you know i'm gonna be real close chested with this recipe or this and that it's like dude you probably fucking put salt and pepper on it and th- like stop it's not that big of a deal yeah let's all just that was a great brisket that was awesome like let's talk about different things and everybody can grow and create a movement mm-hmm. where we all come together that's what it's about that's we what we're we can appreciate about. each other's styles and techniques. Yeah. And I think that really in the last decade, we really have seen, in particular for the American style of barbecue and our traditions, really starting to take hold yes. overseas. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, from expats like Diana Dara from Texas, who has opened up barbecue restaurants in Paris that has wow. become the great food trend and a, a, you know, quite a, a, you know, no slouch of a sure. food city there. Yeah. Sure. Uh, just seeing what's happened in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, you know, Harry Sue's, he spends a lot of time going to Malaysia and places like that and doing classes. Um, and, you know, it's 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 we're reaching across the boundaries yeah. and we're sharing what we do. I mean, that, Mark, this bring in the folks from Mexico uh, in last year and you went down there. They came up here. You know, we're not building walls. We're breaking them down through barbecue. Sure. And, and, and shouldn't it be that way? Uh, You know, that's just it's what's so beautiful about it. I think one of the things that I'm so excited about is that leadership at National Barbecue Association. You guys are embracing the digital age. And that's one of the things we talk about a lot on this podcast, because, you know, frankly, our restaurant wouldn't be open if it wasn't for the Internet. And if it wasn't for us being on Yelp and being on Facebook and being on Instagram and Twitter and now podcasting. But the Internet has created this opportunity where it's breaking down all these different walls. So if you love barbecue, you can go to iTunes and you can search barbecue and then best barbecue podcast is going to come up. Barbecue Central show is going to come up. Man Meat Barbecue is going to come up, you know, behind the smoke, all these different things that you care about. And you're going to find something that you love. And then now you can instead of sitting in traffic where you're like, fuck this. Now you're actually in class and you're listening to people that share the same passion as you. And, you know, that's why. You guys embracing the fact that MBBQA is going to have an official podcast is something that's really yeah. exciting. Without a doubt. And, and I got to brag you on you and Sean and Yoni and, and Stover and all, you know, all of you all who have been involved in our podcast development committee and, and helping us, you know, pave the way towards doing this. You know, obviously digital and social media is something that is very important to us and our ability to reach audiences, both those going into the business, but those on the consumer side as well. And, you know, like this weekend is a great example. We've got our barbecue and grilling academy taking place here on site it's a full day of education on saturday which if you live in the fort worth dallas area there's still tickets available if you're listening to this just go to eventbrite.com and type in nbbqa it'll come up 
for 99 bucks, you get to learn from the masters Incredible. of barbecue and, and it's, it goes from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. But the coolest aspect of it is we're actually going to be live streaming all day. Awesome. Uh, working with with a group to to bring the main stage and other programs. We're going to be walking around. So if you, you're not in the Texas Fort Worth area, you can tune in to the NBBQA Facebook page. And Even lots- if you are. Yeah, and yeah. even if you are and can't make it over, uh, to tune in to see what's going on and, and to broadcast that out there. And, you know, I just think it's so cool that we are using those new technologies to continue to reach out, to, to evangelize, to educate, uh, to deepen people's appreciation, understanding for what this is all about, no matter what their level is. I mean, there, there's lots of, uh, you know, hobbies and professions and whatnot where there's a lot of ego, to, ego and arrogance. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, if you don't know, a squad about barbecue you can come to this thing and you will be embraced and you, they will teach you you will make connections you know they'll give you your car give it their card you'll be able to reach out to them when you come back home we see it time and time and time again but technology and you know what you all are doing with the behind the smoke podcast and you know people like mikey and and greg yep. and, and Ed stover and everybody just you know, you are doing, you're blazing the trail for this. And it's so awesome to, you know, I usually am watching this on Facebook live when you all are <laughs> recording it, but to, to be on it, to have you all here, to have this room, to be able to provide this platform, it's really important to us. And it's just really cool in my book. What you said is awesome too. You said, you know, people want to know what you did to it. And you, you, know, you know, at the end of the day, once you get to a point, there's no reason to hold anything back. No. no. And that's one of the cool things that a lot, you know, I started out long ago. I don't, I don't think I held anything back just because I didn't know any better. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of people now kind of maybe have, and I've understood along the way kind of what that meant. Without really even knowing what I was doing, I was doing the right thing. Yeah. And and when it comes down to it, you know, on Saturday, we're going to sit in front of however many, people, however many people show up in front of my table, and I'm going to show them the exact recipe and technique that we use to win First place ribs at the American Royal. Yeah. Right. And I I'm, I mean, I put everything in a box that I carry sure. to a contest. I'm going to do it exactly <laughs> like I normally do. Yep. And a lot of people, man, I can't believe you give that away. We did a podcast, an SCA podcast at uh, Dan Judd's place in, in Arkansas. And we'll, it was we'll right put, after we'll the We'll put a Royal. link. We'll put a link. Everything we talk about, we're going to put in the show notes. So we'll put a link to that podcast so people can check yeah. it out. Yeah. So we did that at Dan's and, and they were asking us right after the Royal. And I said, man, you're coming off the Royal first place. What did you do? What did you do different? And, you know, I'd had about six beers. And so I, just started, <laughs> I started spewing. And at the end of it, he looks over at me and he's like, dude. He's like, that's enough. You don't need to, you don't need to tell all that. Right. And I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, I, I'm going to be honest in what I say, and I'm going to say it without conviction. And anyone that hears all of this stuff, they're going to have to execute what I told them. Sure. And I can give you the exact recipe and everything that I do, and it's not going to be the same. Yep. It doesn't matter. The execution is different. No, totally. We, we talk about it a lot. It's like I, I can give you the recipes and I can tell you the times and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's a feel. That's right. So barbecue is a feel. So everyone's like, you know, how do I cook a good brisket? I'm like, well, you have to cook a shitty brisket before you can kick a Probably a, a few, probably a few of those a lot. briskets oh, yeah. until I, you get lots. there. I talk about it because I used to do beer a lot. I'm like, the first beer and the first brisket I ever made were the most disgusting things I've ever had. But I ate the whole brisket and I ate, I drank all that beer. You know, but it's it's part of the process. And the more beer you drink, the better the brisket tasted, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you have sure. to embrace that process and know that it's going right. to suck a little bit, but then you can learn. Yeah. So you can have a great recipe. It, it can still turn out bad. Because you have to understand the feel and it's experience. You can't buy experience. Mm-mm. That's the sure? and, and that's the journey. And, and I think the, if you're in the just in the backyard doing this, is that you know it slows you down. It slows down your life. It lets yeah. you you know meditate on focusing on getting it right, perfecting it, and you know it's a great sense of accomplishment. Um, that at the end of the day, and you know, you talk to people, oh, well, I don't have time for that. It's like, you know, you're pretty stressed out, dude. You should probably take some time and sure. pour yourself into something like this and slow it down. I mean, when I cook at home, I'm from Kentucky and I've lived in the Chicago area for 18 years. And I invite people over. I say, come on, let's drink beer and watch <coughs> smoke billow out of, <laughs> out of the smoker. And they're like, well, why would you do that? Is that because that's what you do when you make barbecue? Yeah, absolutely. You sit there, you watch the fire, you make sure everything's all right, and you just enjoy the moment. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, I got my one of my best friends here, Jeremy Clary, and I mean, it's it's to, he he sends us text messages about 
you know, he's just embracing it, doing it. And what was it the other night you were just talking about how you were smoking a brisket? Uh, I did it two nights ago. I wet aged a brisket for the first time. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. But it was just embracing that process. He's like, I'm fucking sitting out here drinking a Coors Light, watching the fucking smoke go up. Yep. You know, it's just part. That's what you do. You can slow it down and enjoy that process. It's so rewarding. And when, you, when it's done and it's, you know, 12 hours, whatever time, however big your brisket was when it's done, you're like, Man, that's that. That's the shit right there. That, that's what you. That's what you live for. Those those times and and a lot of times when you're doing it with other people, those conversations you have while you're doing it and those memories that you create, you can't fucking buy those things. Absolutely, and and that's such a great story to hear because you know when you look out there and we've got data to show the the interest in basic grilling continues to increase. Huge. And you know, getting people to take that next step, maybe buy that first smoker, or try new cuts of meat. Or, or try grilling different meats, try different flavor profiles, try different seasoning profiles. You know, one of the things as an association that we're working hard to do is to expose people to and inspire them to wet age a brisket or, you know, begin to do their first brisket and, and be, realize it's okay if you screw it up, that you're going to continue to perfect it. Uh, because I think that that's really where the next uh, uh, era of opportunity, I think area of growth in our industry, we have amazing technology and accessories and different styles of grills and smokers and combinations and uh, getting more people to move away from the safe, the, the security and comfort yeah. of their gas grill yeah. and realizing mm -hmm. what an incredible journey it is to do these things. You know, that's one of the things that we're really promoted in working to educate people out. I mean, Saturday, that's what it'll be all about. We want people to take that next step, uh, yeah. you know, in their backyard journey. And, and that, that's a meaningful journey. You don't have to be in the business or in the industry to have a barbecue journey. Your sure. backyard journey is what it is. Yeah. And if you can understand that barbecue is 100% subjective. Right. So everybody's palate's different. Mm -hmm. And embrace that. It's okay. Me personally, I don't like too, too much smoke. If it's a mesquite, the bitterness on that doesn't do well with my palate. It's okay. It doesn't make it me right or wrong. It's just what I like. Mm -hmm. So you can make your own barbecue the way you like it and that's okay i mean you know you make different different briskets all the time and it's like some people like it this way some people like it that way it's all good and it's all fun just to learn different styles and different woods and almond wood and you know pecan wood and all these different things it's so much fun to kind of figure out your own palate yeah Absolutely. we're blazing a really cool trail you know we talk about you know organizations that come up through uh, the National Barbecue Association, and one of them is the State Cooking Association. Yep. You know, they really found their home at MBBQA in San Marcos about four years ago and took off and, you know, ribeye you know, grilling and a whole different style of competition has come on the scene and people have embraced it. They're going to have 200 contests this year. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I, we hosted a contest last year for the first time. It was super easy. We raised a lot of money for Operation mm -hmm. Barbecue Relief. And, you know, since then, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been to California a few times and I've, I've tried some of the tri-tip and me and a few buddies are really just kind of taking a notion to, to figuring out tri-tip. Yep. So, um, we just opened a new uh, warehouse and showroom. And so we started doing a lot of that and playing with it. So we said, you know what? The next contest we have, maybe we ought to do, throw an ancillary tri-tip in there. So yep. our contest that we're having in three weeks or two weeks now. Um, at our warehouse in Bahia, Mississippi, we're doing an SCA contest, we're doing a double header ribeye, and we're doing something that's never been done before. The entire contest is going to be done with Snake River Wagyu. Cool. Wow. And on top of that, our ancillary is tri tip. Nice. So we're, cool. we're doing two Snake River Wagyu ribeyes. So you get four Snake River when Wagyu is it? ribeyes. It's on the 25th of what March. What time do I have to come out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everyone cooks a whole tri-tip and turns in a whole Wagyu tri-tip. And, man, so that's right. a whole different game. I mean, we've had tons of emails and texts and phone calls. Where do you get that tri-tip? I'm checking on it. What temperature are you taking it to? How are you cooking it? And everyone's really trying to figure this whole tri-tip thing out. Sure. It's and we, different. I've it's cooked a hundred of them yep. figuring <laughs> it out. It's a lot different. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, when we have this contest and what shows up and what wins. And everyone's going to, you know, we're going to, the way we're going to do it when you turn in, you turn in a hole in a half pan with a lid. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard, you know, when you cook a great piece of meat like that, you don't get to try it. <laughs> right. As a cook, right? That's going to leave you, I mean, it's going to leave you hanging. Right. So you're going to turn that in and then we're going to cut it in half and you're going to, the judges get to judge appearance and doneness. 
and they cut pieces off of it and they judge it and we're going to put it back out to the grazing table. That's going to, I guarantee it's going to be like a gang of hyenas around that <laughs> right? table yeah. wanting to get back in that tri-tip. Yeah, I think one of the things that we love a lot, I mean, we've incorporated it into our business model. It's something that we're passionate about tailgating. And I know you guys have a partnership with Tailgater Magazine. Yes, great They've been info. huge, uh, huge supporters great people. Great of people. us and our amateur barbecue contest as well as tailgating contest because they go hand in hand. You know, mm-hmm. you're cooking... Fire, you're cooking with fire and you know we sports entertainment obviously jeremy's here derek both played in the nfl um you know for us there's something so much bigger yes the the sport is is amazing but it's the friendships and the family that we create around the food before the event yep. which is really what you know when we, we said people have tailgating in their blood yeah and like that tailgating in your blood like that happens at a barbecue contest it'll Doesn't happen matter. at a state contest it'll happen before a k-state game like that's the stuff that we absolutely love you know, my wife bringing our kids. All of us, we all grow up together and we all learn and we all screw things up, but we also are there to share and we get to have a great time. And, and, and a lot of times people don't even go to the game. No, you know, yeah, that, they don't need to. Yeah, they come, they literally <laughs> come the to the tailgate party. Or they yeah. pass out in the truck. <laughs> More TVs and dishes in Whichever the parking comes lot. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, what, other, what other sponsors do you guys need to put a, an, event, an event like this on? Because it's. It's, well, it, this is a it, it takes a task. village of sponsors. I mean, this is a major national event. Um, we work really hard all year. And, uh, you know, tonight, you know, we've got Yeti that was our happy hour sponsor here at the Welcome Reception along with, there you go. if you can hear oh. this, uh, this is just water, but evident, I saw, yeah. evidently, yeah, I, this is just water. Yeah. Trust me. I, I hear that they're, they're, they partnered with Cabo Waba Tequila. Nice. Um, thanks to Megan Martz, who's out here with us tonight to make an incredible drink and a, um, an elixir, I would say, from Traeger, which was absolutely amazing. So yeah. I hear. Uh, and we <laughs> right. got, you know, the saucery, uh, Craig Orson, the Orson family from Shed Barbecue fame. Um, they have a saucery, which is basically a, a, they're a co-packer. They work with people to get their barbecue sauces packaged up um, that are going into the marketplace. So That's they a were big one, deal. Of, That's hard. one of our sponsors tonight. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> the, cool, the coolest thing and. You know, when you think about sponsors and, you know, people look at sponsors like, oh, well, you know, you're selling out to that sponsor, this sponsor. But, you know, one of the most beautiful things has happened this year. And we spent a lot of time cultivating this relationship with Ace Hardware. Um, You know, Ace is coming in as our Academy presenting sponsor. We're doing a lot of different projects with them. And they finally came on board as our official partner. They're they're the official retailer of MBBQA. Really Really smart. And uh, very much by design, when you look at hyper local independent community based people connecting with people some of the most impressive barbecue and grilling departments i've ever seen passionate you know, people yeah. yeah they're they're they've got the you know they're on top of it and and as far as if there's an example out there of a retail operation that is as big as they are you know a national retailer uh, they're just not. They're just killing it in yep. barbecue and grilling, and the, the the passion and the soul of barbecue is in a stores all over the country. You know, you don't have to go search and find someone who may know something about a grill or probably won't know something about the grill in other stores where they're going to sit there. They're not only going to sell you the grill, they're going to teach you. They're going to show you the way. And, you know, it's a natural partnership for MBBQA because we don't just want partners. We want partners who carry that same passion and conviction for what we're doing. Uh, You know, Cheerwine is another one of our big official partners um, that works with us year in and out, year out. Uh, You know, the official soft drink of MBBQA. And they've been around for over 100 years. That's awesome. And in North Carolina, it's barbecue religion to drink Mm -hmm. Cheerwine and eat barbecue. And it's really interesting. We were at an event recently and they're expanding greatly into new markets. There's places that have never heard of Cheerwine, which is so funny to think about because they've been around for so long. And it's, it's such a... Uh, a, a classic with barbecue, but uh, you know we're grateful for all of our relationships and all of our partners that are out there. You know, Traeger's a big partner, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's with us and has been with us for a few years. You know, Chad Ward and those folks. He's great. Weber Grills yeah. are on board this year with us, and uh, you know, it's just super, super cool uh, what we've got going here. And you know, it's not just people showing up and, and presenting. You know, we have a very active industry partner advisory council. And it's a growing, really high-level network where we bring representatives from these companies together to connect with each other, uh, to to talk about issues facing the future of growing our industry, yeah. uh, getting more people involved in the backyard, into barbecue and grilling. And, you know, we were talking earlier today at the board meeting, and, and I think that um, – I, I won't call out which board member it was – 
But, you know, there's a lot of technology. There's a lot of new types of grills. You know, there's pellet grills and, you know, there's offset smokers. There's water-based smokers. There's gas grills. There's duos. There's hybrids. There's electric smokers. There's everything that you can imagine. And, you know, from a traditionalist standpoint, it would be easy to look at, you know, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi enabled wireless probes <laughs> that you're controlling your brisket, uh, you know, and your, your temperature control from 25 miles away. But at the end of the day, someone who, if, if I said the name, would realize that, you know, there's probably no, no more respect and tradition in our industry than this individual. And he made the point that, you know, the technology isn't to bypass the heritage and tradition of which we're all committed to continuing to do live fire, wood fired, man versus fire, woman versus fire, low and slow. But it's the notion that a lot of the technology is, is helping you get to the results that you want and enable you to spend more time with your guests and people that mm -hmm. are coming there, um, you know, in that. So it's, you know, it's, it's not as much a crutch as it is, I think, tools and there's so many to choose from that are enabling us to get even greater connection and enjoyment out sure. of low yeah. and slow cooking. Thank yeah. you, old hickory, right? Yeah, there, I mean, it, it's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, we live in a world where a Amazon is literally taking over all these retail shops, and we talk about it frequently on the podcast. You know, as restaurants, we need to embrace change as well. We have to adapt to the world that we're living in. But at the end of the day, if you're not being hospitable and if you're not partnering with sponsors that get it mm -hmm. you know the fact that ace hardware they go out of their way to educate their staff so they know exactly what's happening at that department yeah that means so much and that's so important and i'm sure mark would echo that in terms of you know we're very selective in terms of you know the depth of part because when we commit and i'll you know when cheerwine came on board and they were looking to go into the chicago area uh, you know, Dan and Jeff came out and Dave Raymond and I, Dave Sweet Baby Ray, yep. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. We literally spent an entire day riding around and introducing them to barbecue restaurant tours around around the area cool. um, and helping them pave the way really cool. uh, to getting to that point. We helped them get cheer wine and you know, that's the level of commitment with, that we have to this. It but absolutely it, it has, is. It has to work on both sides. No yep. matter how much money they have, if they're not buying into the NBBQA and buying into what's going on, then it's, they're never going to get that no. return. But if they buy in and they have their leaders here meeting the people, learning and doing those things and then educating their staff, exactly what Absolutely. happened to you. That's what happened to you at Memphis in May. That's right. You went all in and you're like, shit, I, I have to be a part of this. Yep. This yeah. is fucking amazing. Like yeah. that's exact. And then, I mean, Derek and I, we work really hard to make sure that the people that we partner with for our events, they understand. And the more that they give us, mm -hmm. the more they're always going to get back. Absolutely. Always. That's it's at the cornerstone of when you commit yourself to other people's success, not only you're succeeding, but it helps your success. You know, our partners are part of this family and we'll do everything that we can to help them be successful, uh, you know, as they come in. And, you know, I always joke all the time, you know, a check is is not the end of the road. A check is a promise. I don't take joy in depositing checks. I take joy in seeing relationships evolve and results. Sure. And, and at the, the end of the day. Absolutely. When you give me a check, it's a promise. We're going to do everything that we can to deliver on what, not only what we promised to you, but we're going to continue to treat you like one of our own and doing everything we can do to help make you successful by connecting you to the right people, helping you identify and size up the right opportunities. And it's constantly in my thoughts. I mean, mm -hmm. these folks become like part of our family and it, it's an equal exchange. I mean, I look at some of these relationships and, and the amount of uh, involvement and participation that they've had in the leadership that they've risen up and taken on volunteer leadership roles in our organization uh you know that's that's what it's all about it's yeah. not just Is it about me or you guys smell it more some, uh, there's some smoke there's rolling somebody, somewhere somebody, somebody someone's rolling something. 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 something i don't think i don't think we've eaten all, i don't think we've eaten all day <laughs> <laughs> we should get that taken care of <laughs> Um, but yeah, one of the things for us, you know, we we're so fortunate that people are tuning into the podcast and we're fortunate that there, this is a global phenomenon. You know, we have friends in Norway, Olav, he has a meat and metal, he cooks on a Traeger. He actually started a Norwegian podcast so that he can start sharing exactly what we're talking about in his native tongue. And, you know, my family's from Bulgaria, fire, fire means something all over the world. Yep. And to have Netflix, you know, have these people that are sharing that story coming out to NBBQA to kick this thing off. I mean, that is, yeah. that's inspiring. I mean, oh, it's, it's, it's a great start. It's, it's really, really inspiring. Yeah. And, and then seeing, you know, 
one of the things I'm excited, uh, a company called Art Flame is here. Mm-hmm. This for this is their first conference. But you know, there's so many different types of grills that are used in different countries that are mainstream, and it's like we constantly learning about it, a different style. You know, you got the disc grills and smokers over in Germany, uh, but this is like this beautiful vase looking flat top stainless steel surround you build a fire pit in the middle it heats up heats up the cooking surface and you can basically cook entire meals on this thing That's uh, awesome. on a kind of like a flat top surface and uh you know it's first it looks like a work of art to begin with but um you know it's just so super cool and to see these new options um and the thing i love about art flame is like it's very communal by design mm-hmm. you know it's uh, people can gather around it like stay warm like it's a fire pit you know you know, you can have multiple people if they want to, you know, cook their own foods on there. You can do it. Um, it's just amazing, and and I think that's an, an important point. Is you know, when you look at barbecue, it, it kind of t- connects the dots between all of these different cultures, traditions, and rituals. Uh, but then at the same time, it's like that's what we're doing. You know, we're reaching out and connecting with other countries. You know, you're talking yeah. about Norway and places like that. We've got to continue to cultivate Norway, that. Norway, Canada, appreciation Australia, appreciation for each Mexico. other. And, I mean, you know, it's, it's almost an exchange of traditions. I mean, when we look at the problems in this world, I, I really think that you know barbecue could be part of that solution. Yeah, if we get we get together with my friends from Mexico. Oh, we're down. Some of my buddies. We're down with some carne asada. They say uh, don't they don't, say, don't tempt do you, us with some what do you carne. Mean you spoke Spanish. And <laughs> only if it's food related. <laughs> only if right. food related. <laughs> <laughs> they get off on a tangent and start talking about politics. I'm lost. <laughs> But they, meet us. If it's food related, I'm in there. I got it. I'm so, following. So we appreciate those people that are tuning in. Uh, follow the hashtag I am BBQ 2018. Uh, follow NBBQA on all their social pages. We'll put all that stuff in the show show notes. If you're in Fort Worth, make sure to make it out here on Saturday. Uh, one of the things we talk about is we want people to get involved and we want them to stay curious. We do a social shout out every week and uh, send a prize pack to people that are following along on the show using the hashtag uh, behind the smoke. There is one of our teams that came out to Del Mar the first two years. They are here for the second time, um, and that's Rub Your Meat. They're from Arizona. Uh, So Kelly uh, Kelly and Caleb and their dad, they're all out here ready to get some knowledge. And, you know, this is... This is what it is. I mean, we, we learn from the best. I mean, we've already learned a lot from you guys sharing your story and uh, from Amy earlier and Mike Mills. And we're excited to, to, to cover this event. Also, check out Best Barbecue Show and Barbecue Central Show. Um, they, they're covering the event as well. So this is going to be a big weekend. And, and we're excited. And, and thank you guys so much. Just, uh, just being here is an honor. So thank you guys for having us and well, throwing out an awesome event. Thank you all for doing what you do. We appreciate it. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. But we can't wait for the MBBQA podcast. I am Barbecue out. Podcast. It's, it's, it's coming. coming. It's on the way. It's coming. So thanks, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. This is Sean and Derek. And we just really want to thank you for listening to the podcast. It means the world to us. We'd like you to go check out BehindTheSmokeMedia.com. That's our website where we have barbecue resources for you to help build your barbecue business. Uh, We also have events listed, so anything that's happening in the West Coast barbecue movement, uh, anything that's going on, we want you to go check that out so you can learn more and get involved. We also have show notes uh, from all the episodes, so anything we talked about in the episodes, you can find detailed show notes there. Um, Plus, you can just get in touch with us. It's important that uh, we're here as a resource for you. So please reach out. Let us know how Derek and I can help you with your barbecue journey. Uh, Get involved. Stay curious. And uh, follow us on social at Barbecue War Stories. Uh, We'll talk to you soon.